This is an Accelerate S3 graphics card cooler. Uh, a passive cooler for a low to mid-end graphics cards, uh, which goes for about uh, 40 euros or so delivered. And this is an EVGA. Uh, reference design, uh, I think, uh, GeForce GTX 1060 6 gigabytes, and we're going to make these guys dance. So, uh, the Accelerate S3 is uh, intended to be passively cooled by the case fans in your case, and it comes with this giant aluminium slab which goes on the back of your heatsink uh, to just help pump some heat out of your uh, VRAM and your uh, voltage regs. And that is because while the passive nature of a cooler barely creates any airflow over the stock heatsinks on the co on those components on your graphics card, uh, requiring them to be aided somewhat. Uh, the S3 also comes with a ridiculous amount of mounting hardware. Uh, we won't need all of that, but uh, if we have a look starting at the top left, uh, we have a graphics card bracket, a bunch of little C-clamps which hold the aluminium plate in place, two foam pads for, I, I don't even know what, uh, four metal holdy things which are supposed to hold the graphics card's backplate in place. They clamp around uh, the back of the bolts which made the heatsink, some spaces, I'm not sure for what, and even more bolty things and a bunch of washers which are, you only use one set of these, it depends on which GPU you have, as well as uh, what seems to be an alternative set of mains required for some GPUs. We have a total of three different holes on that one, and there's one mounted already to the cooler, so you get six different hole positions for these, which is going to make them rather universal, which is a nice touch. Uh, however, in our case, it isn't quite universal enough, because as you can see, the big aluminium slab is a lot larger than the PCB of our graphics card. And while that isn't really a bad thing in and of itself, it means that the, the aluminium slab is going to cover up a piece of a heatsink which otherwise would just be floating mid-air. And, uh, well, that's no good. That can inhibit airflow unduly. And the, metal, uh, the thermal conductivity of aluminium uh, isn't good enough that it's actually going to provide m that much more uh, cooling uh, by just having a piece hanging off in free air. So we're going to actually be hacking this up and cutting that down to size to make it fit my card better. Because indeed the reason I chose this particular graphics card over any of the larger designs which were actually cheaper is that I want to be able to have the heatsink extend off of the end of the card in order to get more air flowing through it. Because having that big heatsink just shoved up against the card is not going to make air flow very well through it at all. The less PCB area you have on your card, the better. So, with no further delay, let's get to disassembling this card and having a look at how it looks on the underside and seeing if this thing will even fit. The S3 is so old that it doesn't really have any of the newer uh, Pascal GPUs or whatever the codename for the 10, 10, 000, 1000 series is as specified, but I think we can make it work no matter what. I mean, I've had this old Accelero S1 stuck on every card between an 8800 GT and this 750 Ti. So let's start by avoiding the warranty on our brand new GTX 1060. Uh, EVGA have been generous enough to supply us with no less than two warranty void stickers and this one is a piece of shit because this actually says warranty void is removed and uh, it's barely even on there. Look. Now I actually haven't checked to, to see how this thing goes together before uh, unbolting these screws. I'm, f I'm not sure how you... It's coming apart. There we go. That's our GPU, our What's that? Deep coupling caps, free chokes, some uh, polymer caps over there, all looking fine. So this thing has a horrible cheapo heatsink on it. Uh, it's actually, it seems to be a reference design board uh, with a terrible aftermarket cooler uh, since this was purchased in the midst of the mining craze, well, just in the aftermath of the mining craze. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Nvidia have just run out of proper coolers and they're forcing their OEs to just use what looks more like an old Intel copper slab stock cooler than anything. Not a very nice design at all. Certainly lots of empty trade in there, but never mind that. So we do have a heat spreader on top of that. Uh, that's not bad, it's covering the VRAM. Uh, I don't think that's going to be in the way, or is it going to be in the way? Hmm, we need to investigate. Uh, there we go, I've marked out uh, where we need to make cuts to expose the fitting holes. So now I'm just going to uh, take some suitable tool to this thing, and uh, we'll be back in a sec. In so, moving on, I installed the the correct uh, maintained brackets on the Accelero S1 only to find out that they weren't threaded properly. The bloody mains wouldn't fit at all, they'd just spin the place and that had been no good at all for mounting a big heavy heating to the GPU. Thoroughly disappointed in Arctic here, that's unacceptable really. Uh, but uh, thankfully, since I'm me, I had a, a trashed old GPU heatsink from uh, a 6850 lying around, so I just uh, stole a couple of spaces from that to use as nuts to secure the mains in place. However, that proved not to be very easy since uh, one of the mains would touch one of the heat pipes. So I uh, had to grind it down, uh, upon which action it deferral exploded and disappeared forever, never to be seen again. So thankfully, I had another 6850 cooler lying around, so I stole another one and ground that down more carefully. And now we've finally got our four mains bolted to the cooler and it's actually suitable and uh, rigid enough to actually be used. That was a major bother for something which is supposed to be included in the box. Anyway, it does fit rather nicely and with the thin plastic spaces you get in the box, it'll clamp down quite nicely onto the GPU. And that's where we are right now. So, we're really, uh, all that's left to do is clean up the old thermal compound from the GPU, as well as the included thermal compound on here, which has been all knackered by me testing and seeing if it'll fit, uh, putting the original metal plate back onto the GPU, and then we'll pretty much be on our way. Uh, I hadn't actually intended to get rid of the original thermal compound on here. It uh, just kind of happened because I accidentally put it down in my lap and went, whoops, and was full of like cotton strings and strands and other pieces which you find, find in trousers. And that's our GPU nice and clean. However, before we go ahead and apply our thermal compound and slab the heating on, we need to make some preparations for mounting the big aluminium slab on the back. So uh, the instructions are uh, quite clear on this because uh, the mount for the main heatsink actually clamps onto uh, the mount for this. Uh, so you don't actually mount the cooler onto the PCB, uh, you mount the cooler onto this, which then presses down on the PCB. So this needs to be on in order for everything to fit together. Uh, however, we have a size discrepancy. That is no good at all, and I don't even think it's going to be very good if we fit it the other way around. Well, perhaps slightly better, but we still need to cut it, and if we fit it this way around, we have to cut it on both sides, so really not an ideal solution, no matter how you look at it. So looking at how all of that lines up, that's pretty much the best mind we are going to get because we are limited to the range of the holes on the back there. And you can see the outer holes there at the bottom edge of the screen are just barely capable of fitting on there. So uh, we are losing out quite a bit of heatsink, but uh, then again, there's no piece of beaver. It's fine.
to cut the heat sink, I used one of these uh, oscillating multi tools because rotary tools hate aluminium. It uh, clogs them up. Uh, if you try to use an angle grinder or a Dremel, uh, you're going to have a bad day. This went very sweet, but uh, I did manage to kind of scuff up the edge of the heat sink. Uh, so to kind of masquerade that, I took a wire brush to the whole thing and uh, abused it to give it a bit of a pet patina look and it turned out quite well with some scribbles on the end to signify this graphics card's fate. And that brings us to where we are right now. We are pretty much ready to assemble everything. However, I think we're going to veer away from Arctic Cooling's instructions yet again because they instruct you to put this silly plastic sheet which is basically very firmly in insulating. If I squeeze my finger against that, I can barely feel any temperature getting uh, conducted through from the table, which is uh, room temp. And if I take another poor conductor like a bag of this uh, thermal pad, I can actually feel the coolness of the table through that. So this is a horrible piece of trash. Uh, the point of it, of course, is to prevent the metal heat sink all the anodized around the back of a graphics card from shorting random components out. However, I have something better. Giant Kapton tape. So this stuff is reasonably firmly conductive. You can even use this uh, between transistors and heat sinks if you want to. So I'm just gonna cover this whole thing in it and then rather than using the uh, rather sparse uh, pad that Arctic provide you, I'm going to use a couple of these china pads to basically cover the entire back of a graphics card or rather the entire back of a heatsink to provide thermal coupling to the entire thing. Uh, that's just, well, what's the downside? Uh, I'm going to have to do a bit of mongering because we have a couple of standout uh, tall components, namely a few chokes here and an Eto8 IC and a couple of caps behind the GPU. So I'm going to have to kind of work around those and uh, uh, cut holes in the uh, thermal pads to make room for those. But other than that, it's uh, going to be very simple to do it this way. And it's definitely going to lend us far superior thermal performance since the thermal resistance of these pads is not all that low. Even the rather seemingly high quality one that Arctic does provide, which I can feel this is quite conductive. Uh, it's not going to conduct anywhere near as much as, for instance, thermal paste or direct contact. So it's time to get creative with a box cutter. Here comes a Kapton tape. There's a tiny little gap in the middle. I don't think that's uh, going to matter because uh, we're dealing with probabilities here. Uh, the risk of anything conducting through is actually tiny to begin with. There's going to be thermal pad all over. And uh, yeah, this tiny little strip is just astronomically unlikely that it's going to A, be conductive because uh, anodite aluminium actually is not very conductive at all. The, the paint we injected with a kind of... Uh, insulates very well usually uh, and uh, B there's going to be a shit ton of stuff between the heatsink and the board anyway really I, 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 I'm willing to wager that we could actually get away with just uh, not using anything on the heatsink and it would actually still be fine don't try that at home though and there it's a completed uh, capped on tape heating, not looking bad at all. So now we can focus our attention to the graphics card itself. So uh, we need to essentially get these pads on here and just to have a feel around, see where the high spots are that we're going to have to take care of. And we also need to cut some holes for, for the screws for where the heat sink is going to mate. And I can see right away these pads are the perfect size for this application. They fit exactly to the width of this graphics card. There's barely even a millimeter of play there. That's oh, so lovely. 
we're just going to have to make a cut or two to make this work very, very well. But there's some terrain there, so I'm going to get to work. All right, and there is our pad with a few holes cut into it. So I'm hoping this is going to be even enough and compressible enough to actually make good contact with a heatsink, but I do think so. Uh, we are, however, going to also have to uh, kind of modify the mounting mechanism because the uh, uh, Arctic actually use a couple of rather tall spacers to uh, space the rear heatsink up a bit just to make sure it doesn't uh, short out to anything, but our pads are much uh, thinner than that, so we're going to have to figure something out. Uh, probably going to end up uh, just using uh, washers, random washers, and that's going to be absolutely fine. All right, so getting the correct spacing uh, on this side of the board is going to be rather tricky. So uh, what I'm going to do now is actually uh, put some thermal compound on the uh, processor and basically start putting the cooler on and experimenting with the uh, various washers as we go along. Uh, let's just get a proper big goop on there. That ought to be a lot more than enough. Doesn't really matter if you have too much. Doesn't matter at all, although you don't want to wipe it off on a piece of thing. Oh, a piece of brand new, supposed to be installed thermal pad. Whoops. These things are gooey and horrible, you need to remember. Not to turn your card on its back, else they're gonna go everywhere, because they stick to everything. All right, here we go. Cooler going on. Kind of. Now, I don't want to mess around more than necessary, so I'm just going to kind of estimate how, how many washers I need, and that'll be two of these for each standoff, plus one of the plastic washers, which are not supposed to go on there. So there we go, two of those, and the medium length plastic washers, which are not supposed to go on this side, but they go there anyway. Like so. Now we can take our tormented soul place it roughly correctly like so kind of it's not going to go on quite as straight as I'd hoped but uh, it's it's good enough hopefully all right, so after some consideration, I dared just brute force that in place, and uh, it seems to be resting on the washers on all sides now, although it is considerably tarted, tighter down than uh, it's supposed to be. You can even see uh, this poor guy giving way slightly, but ah, it's good enough. It's good enough for me. I'm not that picky. Uh, we need to keep in mind it's not squeezing anything really against the PCB. It's just these... Uh, things squeezing against each other. So it's not going to damage the graphics card, I don't think. Uh, I cannot see any bending on there due to the tightening, maybe slightly. But that looks damn straight to me. So, yeah, now I need to trim this piece off because if I did not uh, properly align both my pads, it seems which is a bit of a shame because they were perfectly cut, but uh, that's no big deal. Who doesn't love a sharp blade up against their brand new GPU? I sure do. And there we have all of the clips in place. Well, as much as we can fit anyway, three up here and uh, two down here, one right at the end. Uh, I didn't quite get the whole heatsink assembly on entirely straight, so these are not quite doing the job properly, but uh, uh, this was so finicky I'm not going to redo the mounting just for that. It's, it's good enough. This is such a tiny card that uh, it's going to be fine anyway. Uh, however, that means we are now going to move on to the 
next item requiring modification, the ridiculous graphics card attachment mechanism. So this is uh, too long and it means to force lots. Whoever thought that was a good idea? I don't know, but uh, I'm certainly not keeping it that way. Uh, this part's going zing and this part's going zing. And there is the upgraded piece. I actually had no choice but to cut it in this end because it actually covered up the PCIe power connector. But uh, now this should fit on there quite nicely without covering. Yeah, okay, oh, that's definitely still, oh no, maybe, maybe it's not covering it. Maybe, if we're lucky. So let's get that painted. There we have it. All in place. And I think we're almost done. Are we done? Let's wrap the last thing on the instructions. Oh yeah, it's the last thing. It's supposed to go on after you put it in the case. But, uh, stop that. I think we're done. Let's see if this monster lives. Ha! It certainly has some gravity to it. All right, so I've finally brought out a PC. So let's get to this bad, bad boy installed. This thing feels truly massive. Uh, it actually feels more, way more massive and compact than even uh, one of the NVIDIA bricks like a, a stock GTX 780 or something like that, one of those really heavy duty cards. It just feels strong and manly. No, <laughs> very, very sturdy. This bracket does do its job and the strength of the aluminium heatsink there also provides quite a bit of sturdiness to everything now. How well this whole thing is going to actually mount is a good question. All right, the moment of truth is upon us. Will it boot or will it not? Have we destroyed our graphics card for no good reason at all? Here goes. Oh, probably want to. Yeah. Good idea. Have we destroyed our graphics card or not? Well, it's not shorted out. And we've got a green LED. It's working. That is a passively cooled GTX 1060 6 gigabytes. Now I'm gonna have to reconsider the thermal design of this PC a bit and uh, then we'll see what our temps are. Well of course I can't help myself so I find up Fermark right away and this is quite impressive. Uh, we seem to be kind of leveling out now. now I've got all the fans uh, in the case crank but the side door is off we're sitting seemingly stable at about 70C with a case open. And what makes me more happy than anything is that if I touch this top heatsink, that's getting to the brink of being uh, too hot to touch. It's uh, very warm. So we have excellent thermal conductivity into the top heatsink, which is something I really wanted to achieve. If we had done this the way that uh, Arctic intended us to, uh, this heatsink would be uh, hardly getting warm at all because we just have a tiny little thermal interface around the VRAM and the VRMs, but now we have the entire board and it's even sucking up plenty of heat from the GPU itself. And yeah, we still haven't risen above 71C with an open case and passive cooler and a 120 watt card sitting at its power limit. That is not bad. That is not bad at all.